Shalom of Racha. Yisra Hashem Pana Velecha Veyoseim Lecha Shalom. This is the third and the final part, the final line in Berchas Kohenim. And the Kohenim bless us as the Torah instructs them that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should lift his countenance towards us. Yisra Hashem Pana Velecha Veyoseim Lecha Shalom and grant us peace. And this sentence, Yisra Hashem Pana Velecha, seems to raise a contradiction, a difficulty. Because elsewhere in the Torah, we're told that a Kodesh Baruch Hu does not lift his countenance. He doesn't so- show special favor to one group or to another group. The Torah says, Asher lo yisa ponim. A Kodesh Baruch Hu does not lift his countenance. He doesn't show special favoritism, special favor. Rather, he enacts judgment to everyone equally. And the question is, how can the Kohanim bless us with this special blessing, this special bracha, Yisa Hashem Pana Veilecha, surely this contradicts the Pasuk, Asher Lo Yisa Ponim. This question is asked by the Medrash, by the Sifra, and the Medrash answers, Kan Bizman She Yisrael Oisim Ritzoinoi Shel Makoim. When Klal Yisrael, when the Jewish people perform the will of God, the Ritzoinoi Shel Makoim, then they merit the fulfillment of this bracha, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does show us this special favor. Yisa Hashem Pana Velecha. The other Pasuk, which states that HaKadosh Baruch Hu never shows special favor, but rather exacts judgment, that's speaking about when Eina Moisim return Eshel Makam. But when Klal Yisrael, when the Jewish people do the will of God, the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then we merit Yisa Hashem Pana Velecha. And the Sfas Emes asks, surely the difficulty is still there. The Pasuk says, Asher lo yisa ponim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't raise his countenance to anybody. So how can it be, even at times when we perform the divine will, why does that help to solve the contradiction between the verses? Surely the difficulty is still there. And says the Sfas Emes, no. Sometimes it's the Mishpat itself. It's the Midas Adin. The judgment, the actual din, the strict letter of the law, decrees that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should be yis upon him, that he should show special favor. But he doesn't explain. What does this mean? That sometimes the mishpat, the judgment, meaning the strict letter of the law, should itself demand, should itself declare that there should be a yis Hashem ponav eilecha, that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should lift his countenance. Why? I think the answer to this lies in what we call relationships, what we call our connection with our fellow, with others. The Gemara tells us in Bava Metziah, Lo Chava Yerushalayim, Jerusalem was destroyed, Ela al midu divrem al din Torah. Jerusalem was destroyed because we acted towards each other according to the strict letter of the law. And the Gemara explains what should we have done. We shouldn't have done Din Torah, but rather we should have done Lifnim Mishra Sadin. We should have gone beyond the letter of the law in our relationships with one another. And this is a great lesson because the Gemara tells us that when we are in relationship with others, when we love each other, when we feel a closeness and intimacy, then we don't act with one another based on strict judgment, based on the letter of the law. But rather we go beyond it. We go beyond the letter of the law to engage in a type of relationship that means doing more, that means showing favor, showing closeness, going beyond. The Torah tells us that when it comes to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Yisha Hashem Pana Veilecha for a simple reason. Because we know that Bonim Atem La Hashem Elokeichem Because we are children of Hashem. Does a father an act or exact judgment, strict judgment with his children? Would we consider that normative behavior? Of course not. A father concerning his children goes beyond the letter of the law. He doesn't exact particular judgment for everything that they might do wrong, but rather he goes beyond that and he shows them favor. He is Yisa Ponim. He shows them 
as he lifts, he raises his countenance. He shows them exactly what the Pasuk says that a Kodesh Baruch Hu does for us. And of course a Kodesh Baruch Hu does this for us because we are children. It makes sense. It's the, the letter of the law, like the Sfas Emes says. Sometimes the judgment itself, when there's a relationship there, a relationship of father to son, then the judgment, the rule, the way things ought to be, is that Yisa Hashem Panov Elecho, that Hashem lifts, raises His countenance and shows us special favor. Yes, there are other times when we don't experience this closeness, when this relationship is not expressed, and then Hashem lo Yisa Panim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not lift His countenance. He doesn't show special favor. But when things are the way they ought to be, when we are engaged in closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when we're Oisim Ritzoyne Shalmakoim, when we do the divine will, then we're Zoycha, then we merit the fulfillment of this bracha, that Yisa Hashem Panavelecha, like a father to a son, and like we ought to do with our fellows, with our friends, with our colleagues, with those who we're in relationship with, because that's what relationships are about. Like the Pasuk says in Mishle, Ava love mekalkeles es hashura. Love causes us to stray, to divert, to go aside from the letter of the law, from the strict line. So that's what love is about, going beyond. And that's what we, that's what the Kohanim give us, a special bracha. Yisa Hashem ponavelecha. He should raise his countenance and go beyond the strictures, beyond the special exacting nature of judgment. And this gives us a very important, a very timely insight into the end of the Pasuk. Vayaseim lecha shalom, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should give us peace. Because we see from here, peace is not something that we can take for granted. Our world is a world, generally speaking, in which peace is absent. Like the Malachim, the Medrash says, that when the Malachi Asharis, when the ministering angels were consulted with by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, whether to create man or not to create man, to create humankind or not, then the ministering angels of peace, Malachi Shalom, said, no, don't create man because he's Malay Katotis. He's filled with bickering and with arguments and with fights and with wars. And that's the way of the world. In thousands of years of recorded human history, there are only a few decades in which there's no recorded wars in the world. The state of nature, the natural state, as it were, is a state of war, a state of discord, a state of disharmony. That's the way the world generally operates. And that's why the Gemara tells us that one mustn't tell somebody else, Leich b'shalom, go in peace. But only Leich l'shalom, go towards peace. Because Leich b'shalom could be construed as a, as, a, as a curse that he should die. As long as we live, we are not in a state of absolute peace. There's no Leich b'shalom, we're not in peace. We're trying to go towards peace but we don't have a state of peace. Peace is always elusive. And that's why in this bracha, the final bracha of Birchas Koyanim, then the Pasuk reads, Yisa Hashem Panavelecha. He should go with us beyond the letter of the law, beyond the ordinary condition of the world. He should raise his countenance towards us and then, for Yaseim Lecha Shalom, and then give us peace. And right now, we're going through days or weeks of a state of warfare, a campaign, a military campaign that we're suffering through, that many of our brethren, ourselves, those who live in the land of Israel, certainly those who live, who live in the southern parts of the country, but those everywhere on some level are experiencing tough times, times of disquiet, times of danger, times of injury, and times of death. These are difficult times for the Jewish people, for those who live in Israel, and for those around the world. And they remind us that living in Shalom, living in a condition of peace, is something that we can never take for granted. It's something which is dependent on, contingent on, 
our closeness to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, only when we're close to Him, only when we're Oisim Ritzone Shalmakoim, only when we experience that intimacy, that love with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, then we can expect the end of the Pasuk to be fulfilled. For Yaseim Lechash Shalom. Because in order to have peace, we need to be in a state that transcends, that goes beyond the everyday state of the world, the ordinary level on which we live. And we end with a bracha that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should indeed show us His light, His countenance, like we say at the end of every Shmona Esrei in the bracha of Sim Shalom, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should show us the light, or Panecha, the light of His countenance, and give us peace. Hashem oiz le'amo yitain, Hashem yovarech es amoy basholoim. We should all have a wonderful Shabbos.